You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. This guy right here, he's a legend at Lake Gaston, uh, Hunter Smith. I get you up there into the queue. There we are, sir. All right. Let's go on, buddy. Hey, bud. Long time to see. How have you been? It's a... been busy getting back to the shop. It, it's uh it's been a minute, but uh glad to be back. Um yeah, and I definitely want to get into the to, to the sad thing about like how the tournament went because I feel like we can all learn stuff from that. But but first I want to get this question probably answered here. This will probably let me get it back up there. Here it is. All right. Do you have any advice on Lake Gaston during late May? Late May. Um are there fish there? I pulled my laptop in. You're good. And then we got sup boys. How are you guys doing? We got what's up Bassin with big Mona. Oh my goodness. It's so crazy. It's almost like as soon as the guests arrive, the people are all right. I'm good. It's crazy how that works. Uh, your home, lake, Lake gas and you fished it once or twice, right? Just a few times. Um, I'm still getting the hang of it. Um, fished a few ABAs out there and I like the lake a lot. I like dealing with spotted bass. Um, not something that I get to deal with a whole bunch at home. Um, but I do like Lake Gaston. Uh, month of May, you know, I just fished tournament there. Um, it was super interesting. The The spotted bass definitely kind of control where the largemouth are. And the pattern I kind of got on was I fished docks for pretty much two days straight doing, um, you know, during my practice. And I just really only caught spotted bass. And on tournament day, I went to go check just some bedfish that I found. And near those bedfish was just a dock. And I just, I was like, I'm here. Let me skip under it. Caught a three pounder. And that was like 830. So earlier than I had fished any of the docks, you know, while I'd been there. And kind of kept doing that and hooked a four pounder. So around like 10, that bite was over. And my thinking was, you know, the largemouth are there in the morning, spotted bass come in and move. And they're so aggressive that they just, they push those largemouth out. And my thinking was that the largemouth were going to go deeper, find brush piles, find rock piles, you know, that kind of thing. So that's what I found. It was definitely a struggle, but um, those spotted bass really make it interesting. You did really well though in that tournament. I, yeah, I think, um, I think 12 pounds won it and I was, I was right at 10 and I lost one that was, you know, going to help me a bunch, but it felt good to like, finally, you know, come out of there with making a little bit of money. I mean, if you had, and and we'll get into this a little bit later guys, but if you had to pick though, between Gaston and Kerr to fish again, like, (laughs) yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, Um, I I I see that even though like you're, you're sucking at Gaston, you're catching fish. Like you're going through, you know, 12 to 14 inches you know it it sucks when you're in the moment but like you're you're setting the hook and that that's what we all want to do it, and, and we'll get into that a little bit later but like oh we got a big message here from greg plank greg plank hey hunter uh fishing pro tech top notch love you brother fantastic yes, sir, uh we got greg plank again sup boys we got bassin with big oh jesus <laughs> big malone big maloney Big alone, I think. Dude, I'm sorry. I'm terrible. I can't speak English, so I apologize. Um, and then we got Chris Sherwood throwing a spinner bait every time we go out for the Carolina Rick. And that was a big thing, too, that we're going to be getting into. Um, let me check to see if Phil is ready, though, because I keep seeing him popping in and out. Phil, are you ready? I'm ready. Can you hear me? <laughs> are you mowing a lawn? <laughs> no, I'm on my boat. I told you. <laughs> Well, with your headbuds in it, it looks like you're either on a shooting range or you're about to mow. You you told me to wear earbuds, so that's why I did. Or headphones, rather. <laughs> My AirPods are shot, so I would figured the quality wouldn't be very good. Uh, well, since we're waiting for uh, for the daddy of the group, um, I think he's coming. I think he's signing autographs right now. So we'll give him a couple of, a couple more minutes. And okay, never mind. He disappeared. So okay, back to uh, Bassin with Big Malone. Uh, Kerr is, Kerr is tough 70% of the time later in the year, it'll turn up more, but 
fascinating. Like, what is turning up though? Like, I think I think that's what people complain about is turning up where everyone is now catching nine pounds versus three. Or is turning up where it's the Potomac River or the James? Like, and, and I think I don't know if you were on earlier when I went through it. Um, there's a big issue I think with stunted. It's either that there's too many Alabama bass in there, and it's becoming like Lake Norman, where it's like everyone's gonna catch nine pounds, or everything's about the same age class and there's a stunt in growth because if you go to the chesapeake bay everyone in the top catches 22 pounds but then half the field doesn't catch a fish and so if i had to pick between kerr and the upper bay 100 percent kerr because i'm not going to break my boat going across an ocean that's huge and i'm not going to blank i'll catch something and so i think there's something more there's something more underlying that's happening at kerr that people need to be made aware of and i'll get a dwr agent on it guys to talk about that at some point this is more just fishing and fun at this point uh which create the best current on ooh, which creates the best current on gaston when kerr generates or when Ga oh well, that's a neat question okay so um let me guys let me try to read this better is there a better current flow on gaston when kerr is pulling water over the dam into Gaston, or when Gaston itself is actually releasing water. Uh, you want to take a crack at that? I am not a hundred percent sure. Matt knows a lot about that. Um, but it really, I think it's hard to have one better than the other because it changes. Like Matt and I fished there um, one day and every time we went through the P Hill bridge, the current was going a different way. It was really weird. Hmm. I don't know if that's normal or if it was just that day, but um, I know right now they're pulling water from gas to, or from Kerr to try to get that water level down. And I mean, I think 21 pounds won um, a Thursday Dang. tournament last week on Gaston. So I think the fishing is definitely really good you know, if you know what you're doing. And so I don't know if that, if you can contribute that to them pulling water or if it's just May on Gaston, but I know they're pulling water and they're catching big bags. Yeah, and that to me is what's interesting too. You know, what, let me pull Phil on here and see if he's ready while we while we finish up this thought. Where if you're fishing a TVA, if you're fishing a TVA event um, on let's say Lake Chickamauga, you know that the current's going to pull at a specific time amount. It, it, you can set your watch to it. You can't set your watch to it like tidal necessarily where the water moves, but you can set it. Kerr, you don't know when they're going to pull. It feels very random, and I wonder how much that would affect the fish, whereas if you're on a place that has consistent water pulling, at, at, like every week on a Monday, it's going to pull current. I think the fish get used to that, and they'll move into places. If it's random like her, I think it really screws with them, especially in the spawn. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, Kerr is so, anytime you're going to Kerr, the first question someone asks you is, what is the water level? Because that's what everyone wants to know. Mm -hmm. So it's those fish are definitely like super affected by it. And like we saw the open, I mean, that was up in what? 303 point, like almost 304, yeah. I think. And I mean, they were catching them in the bushes. And then when we went, you know, it was a lot of offshore stuff because they had dropped the water three or two or three feet. So it's all dependent on water. It's just, I think it's hard for the anglers and the fish to kind of know what's going on. I a hundred percent agree with that. And then, and then, uh, David, David Williams. Yeah. You just want to crankbait. That was a really good question. That was really depth. So you just want to crankbait, uh, just message me. I'll get your address and we'll kind of get that situated to you. Uh, now that we got this guy on, now he's back from the shooting range. Um, <laughs> I, you need to tell your story because I've had, I've had Matt Hunter have told their story. Um, what got you started in this? And I mean, where did they find you? Like, what, how did this all, Oh my God. Out? They found me in a cow field and uh, then somebody dumped me in a kayak at some point. Like when I say kayak, I don't mean like you sit on top 12 foot rigged out with boxes and rod holders and all that. I'm talking about a nine foot sit inside with a plastic. I uh, calling it a seat is a stretch. And uh, that's what I ran when I was a kid all the way up into middle school on the North Fork of the Shenandoah, um, up at the top around Timberville, that area, if anyone in the audience is local, um, and started catching smallmouth and finding largemouth. And uh, yeah, been kind of obsessive ever since. So, but your name is Phil and you own Phil's Tackle Box. So yeah. uh, for people at home that's on the thumbnail, how did you go from that to glide baits to creating, you know, this website in this niche market? 
Right. So I started bass fishing more other places in high school, you know, got my driver's license, started branching out other places in the state. And, um, you know, time went on, just learn more and learn more. And I don't even know how I found swim baits. Um, I became a member of swim bait universe back in 2017, I think, um, on Facebook. And so that's what really started, you know, a downhill roll. I got my first glide bait summer of 2017, caught it, caught a, caught like a four or five pounder out of a pond. The first, like I literally got home from work. I was working for my dad, got it in the mail, rigged it up, went and fished this pond that night. Remember I was telling you, I caught, I caught my first glide bait fish at night. Uh, that's what happened is a, is a gill glide. And, um, I've just been obsessed ever since just the idea of being able to catch a fish on something like that. It's crazy. Um, so time went on, became more active in the swim bait community. Uh, eventually linked up with the infamous Victor Deppy, um, cause he's just up in Maryland outside of Baltimore and started fishing with him for stripers um because he had this crazy inshore striper bite figured out or landlocked I should say striper bite figured out on swim baits um and we started fishing together more and more that first time I went out with him was back in November of 2019 caught my first striper um it was like 21 pounds, I think. We were actually, we actually ended up trolling the end of that day because it was just ridiculous bad conditions. We tried to throw swim baits in Alabama rigs all day long. Water was chocolate milk, um, blowing wind like crazy. And finally got that fish at the very end of the day. Um, and once again, blew my mind oh my god i need to do this more so started going up there with him more and more and uh fishing his baits a ton since 2019 um and having success on them down here and uh at some point last year he was like hey i can't run a business i need you to run a business and i'll make the baits and uh I was like, all right. So went for it, started Phil's tackle box, um, started selling his baits, and here we are. Already done two shows this year, and we have a third one coming up in California. Right. You're going the... to California? Yep. Damn, dude, I didn't know that. Yeah, Utah. it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. Gonna get to fish the Delta for the first time. Stoked. Um, now, I know somebody's going to ask this question, and so I'm going to try to cut it off. What does your swim base look like? Could you show us one? Yeah, so I, that's what I was doing earlier. I was pulling them out. So this is, this is the taxi shad. This is the 6-inch one. I had a 10-inch one that I caught a 4.5 or something on at Kerr, dumped it at the boat, and then casted it off the next day. But so that's the 6-inch one. That's the seven inch that Thomas got hung up on some kind of structure. Yeah. It was a brush pile, <laughs> actually. <laughs> no, it was like a dock divider or something. Like it was half rotten, but hey, so what that's the seven days. inch. <laughs> huh? That's for another day. That's for yeah, another that's day. The, that's for another day. <laughs> the after this, hour, Joe. This is a beat ass paperweight which um, was the first iteration of the taxi shad baits I just showed. And then we have seven inch crank down, um, the hater. And then we have my personal favorite, come here, the taxi trout. Dude, that thing's been to war. Yeah, I've had this bait since 2019, caught a bunch of valley fish on it. Um, had a bunch of muskies come up and eat it and not get hooks. 
Um, well, this is a good question. We already had it come through the queue from Chris. Can you throw a glide bait on the Shenandoah? Absolutely. I mean, that's like a. But so what size? I've caught, I've caught fish on the Shenandoah on this glide bait. Um, so I like the six inch in general, obviously, most of the year round. Um, you can catch a ton of smallmouth when they're feeding up. Um, it Chris, helps again, you. Can you throw a glide bait in the Shenandoah? If so, I think it's the important thing. When oh, should I try it? So let me, let me reiterate. When What's the try? best time? Best time is spring. Um, once the water hits like getting close to 60, it's go time. And then you can... Thank you, Matt. It looked like you were in the witness protection there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Hey. What's up, and boys? You can, hey, you can catch him on it, though. Uh, once the water hits that early 60s, like 58 range, um, when they really start moving and getting out of the winter holes, kind of, and winter uh, moving around. And you can catch them all the way through till it gets cold again i've caught a five pounder on this bait in august um so and if you're musky fishing they work they work well when it's cold i normally throw this bait in like january february so now jeremy jeremy has a question what is your best size swim bait for northern virginia jeremy could you tell us like what do you mean like a sleeters lake like a pond like like what yeah what do you mean? like what, what is really mind? yeah i mean it, yeah it depends where you're at depends what your fish are eating and um you gotta be able to be throwing it at the best time when they're more likely to get that big meal um, what's more important is being able to present the bait effectively for whatever water you're on. Not as much the size, I think. The size is important, but if you're fishing for largemouth, like if you're there at the right time and can get it in the right spot, they'll eat some pretty big stuff. Well, I got two guys on here also that can back you up on that since they will live and die throwing baits that are about 20 inches long. So, I mean, how much of it, <laughs> how much of the size is basically people are intimidated to throw it? What do you, what um, do you mean? I think that it's again, all about confidence. Um, I think yeah. the glide, the nice, the cool thing about a glide bait is if you throw it, you know, in a, in a fairly clear body of water, you're going to see fish at some point. And that's yep. just going to give you enough confidence to where like, you know, that your baits seen and responded to. And then even if you don't get bit, like, like I had Phil in my boat and just seeing him get a follow on a glide bait made my confidence go so much higher. And I know Matt saw him cut, you know, hook a big one. And that made Matt, you know, lock a big bait in his hands for the day. So just seeing that bait get, you know, responded to, it helps with your confidence so much. And that's, that's the biggest thing in my opinion, when throwing those type of baits. Yep. And then I guess the next question I just popped through here. I just answered that one. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Good Lord, I can't read. Uh, what color works best? I mean, I know like, like sheet white is used a lot. Um, that's a custom color that you guys have. Uh, and <laughs> other, other, other colors. That you, <laughs> is there other colors that you guys um, know that you think would be worth throwing? This color works really well a lot of places. Um, it's weathered resin, <laughs> weathered bare resin when it gets yellow from being out in the sun so much. But for real though, um, oh man, out of anything you could fish, I would almost have to say most of the time it matters, color matters the least when you're throwing the big baits. Now, sometimes it does. I mean, guys say that about color all the time. It doesn't matter until it does. But um, that's something that you kind of have to dial in on your own body of water, you know, and try fishing different stuff. Um, but, yeah, 
all around. You can't go wrong with bone. I've seen fish caught on it all across the country, including here. Um, it works. Now, especially. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, especially like shad lakes. I mean, lots of shad lakes around here. It's it's going to work. Now, if people want to order these baits, like, um, is the website the best place to go? Yeah. So go follow my Instagram. Um, I can't remember if it's PTB or Phil. No, it's Phil's Tackle Box. Don't worry, and guys. Link in the episode. <laughs> he'll link it. Yeah. He'll link good. it. But so we do, um, I do this in drop style because we can't make them. We can't make enough to keep them up on the website all the time and so i announce you know what's going to be dropping and everything on my instagram adrian there he is so professional yes uh i i showed these guys how professional i am this past weekend but um one of the best <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah so I, I do announcements on my social media and then you can go on my website and subscribe to emails and i send emails out to anybody that subscribed um as soon as i drop them so you can get first dibs but and then guys i still have a bunch of baits that i will never throw because i drink tequila and order stuff off tackle warehouse uh <laughs> people that ask the best questions will be getting some of these baits here so keep asking uh we have another question by bassin with big alone or malone i don't i don't uh, malone uh please turning up equal more bites equal better time might snag a few five or sixes um i think you're trying to are you trying to talk about like that there are big fish there i'm not saying that kurt doesn't have big fish but it's like the upper bay if there's only if there's a smaller population of big fish yeah in theory you could catch them but if you go to a place like toledo bend where there's a higher proportion of big fish that'll show up in the scales regardless i think that's the issue with kurt right now is you don't have that year class of fish as as prominent as other places um and I honestly think that almost like segues us um, kind of into this tournament, into into Kerr. And we got to, I guess, rip the Band-Aid off here uh, and kind of talk about going into it. How do you guys want to do this? Do you want to talk about practice? you want to go like uh, Phil? Uh, we could go Phil first, how your practice went, and then we could go Hunter <laughs> and then Matt. Or... I think we should it, definitely tell the story how Phil ended up there. And you too. Yeah, so, that, that is that is pretty that's important. So pretty funny. This, this was an interesting week, just all all around. So interesting. <laughs> so you want me you want me to tell that? Yeah, Phil, send it. All right. So I bought this boat that I'm in. This gambler. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And she's only gonna be looking better. But um, bought that off of Matt a couple months ago. And he was gracious enough to let me make some chunk payments on it. And um, so I paid the last bit of it off. And I needed to get the title from him for the boat and trailer. And I texted him on Tuesday after I got off work. I'm like, hey, you know, what are you doing tomorrow? He's like, oh, I'm going to Kerr to start pre-fishing for this BFL. Come down. I'm like, okay. He's like, just come down whenever. I'll pick you up at the ramp. I'm like, all right. So I show up at like 11 and uh, he come gets me, comes and gets me. We go under the bridge and around the bend and he's down there putting his custom paint job on his seven inch glide bait. And um, I proceed to stick like a four, four and a half on the 10 inch taxi shad. And uh, then dump it right at the boat because my motor skills were shutting down because I was in so much shock and Matt was freaking out too. And then uh, we fished the rest of that day, had some decent success compared to the rest of the time we were there. And then we meet back up with Hunter at the, uh, can't remember the name of that Mexican restaurant. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the, Me the mexican restaurant we get some drinks go back to the cabin and they're like well we got four beds here like why don't you just fish tomorrow I'm like all right so 
go back out, fish the next day. Then they're like, well, why don't you just fish the tournament Saturday? I mean, you'll probably win. Like, just jump in his coat. You'll probably win. I'm like, damn. <laughs> Storms rolling in Saturday. You have clothes, by the way. Stuff was looking good. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I had no clothes. I was totally prepared to go back straight back home Wednesday night. I had no clothes, no toothbrush, no toothpaste, no soap, no de- – actually, I did have a stick of deodorant in the car. But no contact solution, no – like, nothing. And I had literally, like, one of these bins of the most random baits ever. And they're like – they talked me into, like, staying down there for four days <laughs> and trying to fish the tournament. I say trying because – um they ran out of boats they ran out of boats and then i stayed up late that night and then woke up at 10 the next day to three text messages from the tournament director saying i need a (laughs) co-angler so yeah it was the time it was the time but yeah that's how i ended up down there how did i end up down there that is a good question um Matt just straight up texted you and was like, hey, come down. Yeah. 35 people like, hey, just come to Kurt. <laughs> just come down. It was just you two guys. Because I still I have your spinner bait. <laughs> oh, dude. That's a great spinner bait. <laughs> I can get it back that's to you. I have spinner bait. I'm going to need that back. That's Yeah, for sure. I have your blanket and pillow and all that <laughs> stuff, too. I'm honestly surprised you didn't leave it there. I was like no. totally ready for you to be like, oh, I left that. I thought it came with the cabin. No, the cabin was the size of a shoebox. Even I couldn't miss anything in there. <laughs> Dude, I was afraid that the next family was going to find you passed out in that place. Because when I left in the morning, I was like, you were out. And I was like, do, what do, I, do I lock the door to make sure no one comes in on him? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they did come by at one point. And they were like, hey, like you need to leave. I was like, I'm, I'm on the way out. Okay, geez. <laughs> oh my god um yeah i ended up there how did i uh yeah matt texted me i think it was the week the week before and asked me if i wanted to come down and then the same week he asked me and i really thought he was bsing the first time and i was like oh you're serious (laughs) i was like okay yeah i got nothing else to do so i might as well uh come on down there and see the lake which that's always serious (laughs) always no i didn't know that you lived that far i'm surprised you made that run and again, I appreciate it. Like I, I knew it would be. I mean, it's far for all of us. Like it's at least a couple hours. But I didn't know it was a. What was it? In, what did it end up being? Six out. It was six and a half. It was six and a half on the way down. It was five on the way back. But that's because I got up. Oh my! You guys, and so down. much further than I thought you were from there. I was like, that might be like three hours. But it'll be cool, you know. Come <laughs> have a I'm driving from Canada for one day. It's like, oh, like screw it. it. Was six hours away. Uh, but, it was, yeah, it was fun. We had a really good day too, and actually, um, I'm really glad I fished with you because that's how I put the beginning of my day together. Going off of some like the shallow point deal that you worked out, you were like, "Let's try this for a little bit." I was like, "All right, let's do it." So, yeah, it was perfect. Well, that will be fun to be conversation because I think that, like if you guys have, of course, you guys have listened to this. Like so much of it is not to me about the base, but the decisions that that go into the day before and then during the day, and that's what leads to success or failure. Um, who wants to start then? God and fish it. <laughs> Matt, Hunter? Uh, I mean, I'll go. You want to start with practice or just the tournament? Let's go. Well, I think practice is where tournaments won or lost, right? Yeah. Um, practice sucked. <laughs> um, I don't. Well, what did I you do? We, you get a I good started practice. off I, the first day I caught uh, two bass. I caught about 40 crappie and two catfish and a striper. So that was cool. You were crap. <laughs> Oh, um, you smoked the crappie. What are you talking about? Dialed. No, no, I caught some slabs. Um, <laughs> yeah, practice was just rough. Like I could get stuff going, but it was like it was just here and there. And I think everyone in that tournament, all 150 of us or whatever it was, all found the same pattern: a, a spinnerbait on point. Mm-hmm. So I tried my best to do other stuff, but that was like the only way that I could get bit. I did get up bit on a dock bite which was really cool uh, a marina bite or dock bite 
the dock bite and the marina bite, but the dock bite was really cool because those fish were there. Um, any, any dock that I would scan the live scope under, it would you'd see hundreds of crappie. Like they were just absolutely loaded on these docks. So I, I believe the bass were either feeding on the crappie or whatever the crappie were feeding on. Um, and it was just, that was a lot of fun. I caught a ton of fish, but with the weather we had Saturday, it just didn't translate. And then, yeah, I rolled into a marina. Just, I, I, I just saw it and I was like, that's something different. I don't think, I'd never seen it. I'd never heard of anyone fishing it. And me and Phil rode in there on Friday and I pulled out a jerk bait and it was, I think my third or fourth cast, I hooked a three and then yeah. I, think I hooked a keeper and then maybe missed one or two, like within the first, like, 20 minutes so yeah it was yeah i definitely thought i had something going on there um but yeah it was practice was just really random and i think coming off you know the 250 boat open and then the vfl the day after that and then i'm sure there were cat trails or local derbs going on and stuff throughout the week so practice was really just just tough i think um you know matt would say the same thing it was just hard to put something together i think thursday and friday i probably had anywhere from like eight to ten pounds like nothing crazy but um, i mean 10 pounds would get you close to getting paid i mean like we were spot on in our calculations that 13 is a is a hell if you put 13 up man you were going to be sitting pretty uh and, and you're one bite away at that point um, yeah and then was so it, it was 10 they got paid right or 11 well that's why i do i got this up hold on a second present because I got, I got i got it right up here on my fourth monitor <laughs> um nice. 11 pounds got you 257 yeah. bucks 24th place all right i mean that's sad <laughs> yeah that's that's kind of rough big ball but, one but if if you we look had, at, we had at least that the day before thomas we had probably, oh we had 13 we, we had 13 pounds easy Plus that one, and then we'll still bring up when we talk talk to you is like that yeah. one on that bush on that swim bait, and that you were trying to stick, and I was trying to plead with you not to and just come back to him. <laughs> I was like, should I catch it? We'll talk about it. Later. Uh, yeah, it was every bit of three to four pounds. Yeah, Matt would have definitely boat flipped that thing if you weren't there. <laughs> it, that 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 is the one interesting thing though is like both of you guys like to stick a lot of fish like i don't know like that emotionally to me like i don't if i catch 30 pounds a day before a tournament and then i bomb i feel like i would be on suicide watch i don't know if i could emotionally handle that but you guys are, are <laughs> but it's like that calm cool collective it's like you don't care which i think does help too i think i mean at smith mountain I mean, I stuck so many, which a jerk bait, you're not shaking a jerk bait fish off. No. Like no matter how hard you try. And that's the same thing with the marina. Like I was catching them on jerk bait. Like I wasn't shaking those off. But um yeah, I definitely stick probably more fish than I should. But it's I at the end of the day, I just I like catching fish. So like I'm there for four days. Like I'm gonna catch a bass. Like mm -hmm. like we're fishing a derb and like I wanna do well, but I mean I I'm trying to catch a fish how does that translate then getting back onto topic day the day of the tournament you launch are, are you going to the marina first are you going with the dock bite because there was a couple of things playing yeah um my first move i ran to a bluff wall that phil and i fished um mm -hmm. i just those types of tournaments on a lake like kerr gaston or like smith mountain like i always think starting on some sort of rock is gonna get you a bite early in the morning and, you know, even with those fish all being on main lake, rocky points, like I was, my plan was that I was going to hit this bluff wall because I feel like there's always fish on a bluff wall, like at the beginning of the day. It's so easy, especially during a shad spawn. It's so easy for fish to like push bait fish up against that wall in the morning that I thought I figured they'd be feeding. They weren't. I think I got like one bite or something, but that's how I started. And it wasn't the move, but when Phil and I went there, it was, we hooked like a three and I think he caught a small one. So that that's where i started and it didn't work out but well were you there all day what was your first decision i ran there um first thing and i stayed there for 10 minutes and my bite was pretty much all dependent on wind um i think the wind really made those fish eat on those points and there was supposed to be a ton of wind on saturday 
and I got to my first spot and it was like barely a ripple, like it was the last ball up there. So I kind of had to scratch that pretty quick. And then I kind of adjusted to going to run in some main lake points earlier than I was planning on. And I caught two fish on a spook pretty quick. Hmm. And then the, I was literally, we'd run the boat. I told my calling to like, be ready. We're going to have to move like as much as we can. We're just going to jump points pretty much. And I would drive until I saw a point that was in wind that, that looked like what I was aiming for. And that's what I pretty much did until I think at like 10 o'clock, like anywhere I'd go on the lake, I could not find wind at all. And that hmm. pretty much is what killed me. So you tried to fish points without wind and you didn't have the same success? No, not even like a bite or you, I mean, you like fishing enough, you roll into an area and you're like, this is dead. Like there, you just get that feeling that there's nothing going on. Um, I threw Carolina rig, like I slowed down finesse with a drop shot. Like I did, there was just nothing happening on those points that didn't have wind on them. And there was probably fish there. They just, they weren't going to bite. So it sounds like if you could do it again, you would have flip flopped and started with the point deal. hundred percent. And then run it. Cause you, I mean, you did have, I mean, guys, you know, I could, I can bring this back up for everybody. Um, you know, and, and everyone at home was probably saying like, well, okay, he had, you know, four pounds, 90th place. Yeah. But if you fill out your limit, you're probably right there with everybody else. So it's not as bad as it actually looks. Like if you fill out the limit, you're probably in the top 30, depending yeah. if you're one bite away from that. Um, so, and you had your three and that's just, that is so that it's, this place is such a grind. It really is. And, and, uh, going back on that wind thing at, um, at, I think we weighed in, I think Matt and I were doing it like two fifteen. the wind literally started blowing at like one o'clock and I rolled up on a, I was like, all right, I finished, I went into the Marina and I hooked one on a jerk bait that kept, and I probably hooked 15 others that were you know, between 12 and 13. And then the wind finally started blowing. I ran to a point and my co-angler caught one right off the bat on a spinner bait. And then I just, I ran out of time. So it was, I was making the right decisions. I was just either too early or too late, pretty much. Which I, I don't know. Like I personally think that's a good little, like, you know, solace that you were doing the right thing. Even though it didn't execute, it'd be better than if you run up the river and no one else is doing that and you were so far in left field. It like you can build on that next time. Yeah, 100 percent And that's what I try to do with any tournament. I mean, even if I bomb, like I'm looking to take, you know, on that. I mean, that was a long ride home. Like I, you know, that's a tough ride home after you finish 90th in a VFL after spending, you know, three days there. So you did a lot of thinking. Um, I'm glad Phil called me and cheered me up a little bit, telling me his story about how he missed the VFL. But um, <laughs> it was, yeah. And I, still I think, ran I out try of to gas. Take the, good, the good from the tournament, and I try to take the bad, and then it's all a learning experience. Phil, you you ran out of gas. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, on, on the way home, I was. Uh, I didn't. I mean, I was this close. I'm talking on the phone. I can't remember if it was Matt or Vic, and I'm just talking and talking and talking. And next, I'm going up Athens Mountain. I look down at my uh, screen, and it says zero miles to empty. And uh, I don't know if you've ever been up Athens Mountain. But that's not exactly a great place to run out of gas. <laughs> I literally drifted down the back side of the mountain into Waynesboro into the gas station. Pretty slick. Yeah, it was awesome. Just your mic. It Avalon. sounds like you're going, uh, you're clicking in and out, boss. Check your mic. Do me? Mic check yes. one. Two. Mic check Phil. Mic check Phil. Yo. Yo. Hold on. Let's just. I think it got worse. <laughs> <laughs> what? Try to speak words. Yo, that's better. There we Can go. Can you hear me? We're good. So basically, uh, so to recap, then on the day of, you missed the tournament. A couple walked in on you sleeping, and then you ran out of gas on the way home. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Okay. That's correct. That's accurate. That sounds pretty on par. <laughs> that's about <laughs> right. It's about right. Matt, so, um, I mean, I guess, I guess you're up like what, and okay. I think this is interesting. Like what happened in practice in your mind, I guess, and then what translated during the tournament? 
Okay, so first two days of practice. Going into it, I was thinking I was going to heavily focus on kind of like a post-bond pattern. I was looking for fish that were going to be secondary points, main lake points, like fish that are moving out of those shallow pockets and away from the bushes because the water is also getting drawn down. And that was kind of the goal. Like I just wanted to hit as many of those as I could and figure out like find brush piles on them, find rock on them, find areas on these points that are going to have fish. Also check like multiple areas of the lake, up lake or towards um, the uh, the bridge up that way towards Okanichi where the water is typically a little bit dirtier and then down in Nutbush because it's where we were launching. And I had very little, I mean, really, truly no experience down there besides fishing down that way like twice and only the first fifth, we'll say fifth of that creek. So I wanted to jump around the lake a bunch and look at point, basically. That was my my deal. I was like, there are going to be points and maybe some bushes, but I was kind of writing the bushes out because the water was dropping. Um, but practice went pretty good. Like I went out uh, the first day, met up with Hunter, grabbed a reel, rigged everything up for like an hour. I fished for five minutes and then I caught one on an A rig, went to pick up Bill. He missed the one on a 10 inch glide bait. And at this point I'm like, all right, this is going to be sick. Like, you know, you get a 10 inch glide fish to bite. Things look pretty good. I didn't even think they're like, I don't know. I think that seeing a fish like that there is pretty significant. Like a four pounder there is a significant fish. Everyone that I've talked to about it, they're like, yeah, that's a big one at Kerr. Like that'll help you a lot, which I think, yes, at this point. Um, so that got me hyped up especially seeing Phil's glide fish. I spent an hour decorating my seven inch glide uh, with this foil job, which was terrible, which I ended up ripping off actually, but I did catch a fish on it. San Maybe Francisco like, special. Yeah, it was the San Francisco special. It was real shiny. It was uh, just, you know, the, the disco shad. What did I call it? Phil, do you remember? Oh no, Phil's gone. <laughs> okay. Phil's gone. Oh, we can't hear you, dude. You're just Phil, sign language. You sign language. Spell it out. Call you. Oh, your phone's dead. I, what did we call it? It was something. Oh, the silver bullet. The silver. The silver that's surfer. Silver. That's oh, what it was. The silver surfer. Yo. Uh, but I did catch I caught a fish on it. He's back. Yeah. I, I might be Phil in a minute. Actually, I only have 12 <laughs> people on my computer, and I realized that I don't have my charger. So just I go. For, have, yeah. Power through it. Might have to jump on the phone. But so that was the first day. Um, what else did we catch fish on? Bill, drop shot. Oh man, drop shot, shaky head, spinner bait, yeah. jerk bait, uh, glide bait, a rig. It was whatever we wanted to throw, basically, we were getting bit on. And I did catch, oh, I caught one on, or almost caught one on the walking bait too. Like oh, it yeah. was literally that like was whatever sick. we wanted to throw, we were getting bit on. It was the dumbest spot too with that walking Tell bait. Tell me like, about that. Yeah. Okay. So the walking bait fish, we pull into a secondary point to fish and it has a small gut behind it. that looks just like a spawning flat and it was heavily shaded and slick calm. And we kind of work our way back there and I'm looking at it. You'd think like, okay, I can throw a frog to the bank. And if there's anything up there, it'll probably blow up on it. But for whatever reason, I looked down at this zero spook that I got. And I was like, actually, I want to throw the spook. It has this perfect clicking noise. And I worked. I mean, it's the same thing as if I'd thrown a frog. But I will say this fish did something that I've never really seen. Like I'm working it back and it comes up and it pops on it. What do you think it was like two pounds, Phil? Maybe. I mean, a pound and a half. It wasn't huge. Like. It wanted to eat. Yeah. Popped on the bait. Right I was like, oh my God, like I can't believe I got bit. And then the fish basically like circles around it and it comes up behind it and just looking at it. And it's on the surface. I'm like, twitch, twitch, and it comes up and looks at it, twitch it one more time, and he like pops it and just leaves. Like missed it. But still really cool to see that. Um basically the complete opposite conditions you think to throw a spook, like mm -hmm. slick calm. 
middle of the day to like one o'clock sun's as high as it could be uh but yeah like that was pretty neat but that day was kind of crazy because we literally caught fish on everything and it's weird because hunter had what hunter you had two fish right the first day i two wouldn't bass. even count one of them as a fish i'll say two i'll say one fish right i, caught, I think i caught one fish on a spinnerbait on a brush pile and it was like my third or fourth cast of the day and then like caught one that was like i don't know nine or ten inches but yeah, yeah it, compared to your day like it was horrible and then like, like were, the next day we kind of flip flop yeah no for sure the next day uh day two of practice i mean we could not get anything together phil did we even catch any fish the second day i don't even remember at this point um not a few we caught like three or four yeah, right we caught a few I got some bites on the mag draft and a couple of follows on the glide. And then I might have caught one on something conventional, but I don't even remember. And then I think you, you caught a couple on whatever. Yeah. But it was I think we ran pretty much similar stuff as the day before, and it just was not happening. Um, and then you know, going into day three of practice just to get through this. Uh, Thomas, you and I had a really, what I thought was a really good day. And we were catching them kind of how I wanted, like the same deal, shallow points. And then I had the one bigger fish that I caught offshore on that point, mm -hmm. on that rock or like that ledge deal, which was three and a half, four pounds, which was good. And then we had, I'd say a pretty solid, like you said, 13 pounds, probably 12, 13 pounds. Uh, and that was... Shaky head, Ned rig, drop shot, spy I bait, spy bait. You, yeah, the spy bait. That was a nice little trick. I like that. That was a. Uh, it makes sense, like for sure. So, swim Matt, swim bait. going going into the tournament, what number? How much pounds did you expect to catch? Because I had a number in mind for me. I'm curious what yours was. What did I expect? I, like what, I was, what were you expecting your bag to be at the tournament? My goal was 10 pounds, dude. I just wanted to catch a limit. Actually, so, yeah, that I'll talk on that in a second. But I wanted 10 pounds. That I just wanted to catch a limit of 10 and then work from there. And it just didn't go that way, of course. But but, um, but the why, I yeah. guess, is you, you get there in the tournament. You have a co I think this is important, too, is you had a co-angler that was very passionate. Um that Dude, some things. Yo, he different level. I spoke with Phil about this on the drive home, and it's I I don't think I processed it fully, but I do think having a co-angler as good as he was and knew and that knew as much as he knew and had the experience that he had almost threw me off what I should have been doing. And it's nothing against him. He no, 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 no. Guy. He was not pushy at all. Like, oh, let's go here. Let's try this. Let's do this. It was very, like, he was just literally like, hey, if we need some spots with fish, I got them. And if you want to go there, we can go look. Like, you can go. I'll take you there. You can look at it. If you don't feel it, we can leave. Like, it's mm -hmm. up to you. Whatever you want to do. It was just, he, he was the nicest guy. But literally every spot we went to of his was loaded it was loaded and i just could not get it together but he did really well i'm on a two for two cast streak of, or my co's are on a two for two cast streak which is good um and i learned a lot fishing with him like i i it's like almost feels like it should have been the opposite like i should have been the co he should have been but regardless, no because like, uh, i think this is really important for people yeah. at home because i've had co-anglers like that too where it's like clearly they know more clearly they have some spots but it got me yeah. out of my head and it probably, even though they knew more, I did worse. And it so it almost was intimidating me. I'm like, damn, I don't want to screw this guy up. But like, if I had like just kept hopping these shallow points fast, moving fast, even if I went for a two hour stretch without catching fish, I know that I would have caught some eventually because the last two stops of the day, we started doing that again and hit spots that we'd hit earlier. Oh my gosh. Like those windy shallow points and like, I caught two. He caught like six uh, at one wow. spot. <laughs> it was actually one of the spots that you and I had fished. Um, in between the two islands, like that really shallow flat point, there was a, a piece of brush. It was a hard wood tree that's just like laid down mm -hmm. and they were loaded up in there. But yeah, it, I think that 
had I just stuck with my plan and what I wanted to do, what I should have done, it would have worked out better in my favor. But either way, I learned a ton. Had uh, still had a good day. He he did well, so I'm stoked on that. I think that's so important that for people at home that want to get into tournament fishing and understanding like the decisions you make are just, it, it is the difference. Luck is involved. Of course, as Brandon Polonick said, the only luck involves when you drop your bait down there, the four pounder eats it before the two pounder gets it. That's the luck part. A lot of times, other than that, it's execution and good decisions. And it sounds like that running gun pattern on these lakes is so important. And you, you guys had the tangible, like, okay, this is what I need to do. It's there. And it was just maybe that little extra execution. And then everything would have been different because you had six pounds for four fish. Um, you fill out that limit. You probably got eight to nine and then you're a kicker away and you're, you're cashing a check. Like you were damn close. You were, yeah, right I had, I had two shots too. Like I had a fish on a ball head with a swim bait that jumped off. That was probably three pounds. Oh also, that was probably the worst, like 30 seconds I've had in a long time. So I hooked that fish. I'm fighting it. Um, my co David like jumps up to the front with the net and he puts his rod down on the left hand side of the boat. Um, he's like, what side do you want it on? And I was going to bring it around the front of the trolling motor and keep that sweeping motion around the boat. But the fish jumped and threw the bait and I spun around basically entirely all the way back to the trolling motor. And I was just kind of grumbling. I was like, ah, and I stepped back on the trolling motor. It's on hundred percent. And I point back into the wall. I throw him off balance. He steps on his you know, Stratic CI4 and snaps it in half at the frame. And I just am like, dude, I am so, so, so sorry. Like, <laughs> I felt Ooh. terrible. He was cool about it. He was like, it was a freak accident. Like, it happens. Like, I know you didn't mean to trip me up, basically, but it it was just a really shitty situation all around. I was like, dude, take, like, I had the same exact reel on one of my rods. I'm like, just take it, take, use this the rest of the day. Like we'll work out whatever needs to be worked out later. Like I felt terrible, uh, but he was super kind and yeah, but that whole thing sucked. And then I missed another one, maybe an hour later on a drop shot that I'm fighting and just pulled off. So I had two shots at a limit, but. Well, why was, do you think, why do you think yeah. you, was it just a random, yeah, like shit happens type of deal? Or do you think there was something you did in your execution that was wrong? Nope. I truly think both of those fish were just like I didn't run good. <laughs> I needed the fish that was jumping around like a small mouth to just stay pinned and it didn't. And the drop shot fish, I I don't know. I, I hooked him well and it felt like as I'm fighting him, it just it just pulled free. Like he dug away and it popped out of his mouth. So I don't know if I had him skin hooked or or what, but I don't think I could have done anything differently. Uh but yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, huge shout out to your co-angler. And what was his name to give him a shout out? You said Dave? David. I don't want to say his last name, last name wrong. His name was Dave. David. I want to say it's, I can't, I can't even say it, dude. David Delicious. Decisious. David Delicious. I, I well, cannot that, I can say, say it because I can't speak. Um, let me. Hold on. Let me, I got it. I, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, share this right here. Decisious. David DeSouches, uh, 15th place. Huge shout out to you, bud. Uh, He's a thanks. beast. He like awesome dude. By far best co I've ever had. Like he, he was very cool. And he taught me so much throughout the day. Truly. Like he knows a lot about that. Like he has a ton of experience. He's probably been fishing these tournaments for like 20 years. So shout uh, huge. And I'll try to get you on the show, David. I'm going to reach out to you here. Um, and then, I mean, do you guys, uh, I want to kind of get through all these questions so I can let you guys go. Uh, I know you guys are busy and uh, Phil, it looks like you need to find a home. Um, with that <laughs> Jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like you're in the middle of a Walmart parking lot. Um, anyway, like, like hard, bro. I need, I will do a Patreon to get you like a stand for your phone. Um, anyway, uh, what do you guys got coming up? Or break it. <laughs> break it. Uh, we'll, we'll start. We'll start clockwise. Hunter, what do you got coming up? Coming up, um, I'm home for a while. Um, I think I've I've got a few ABAs coming up. Um, really, just grinding the YouTube. I got a whole bunch of videos coming up in the next couple of weeks. So, running around fishing. Probably have to fish with something mad at some point, unfortunately. But 
got, just got a bunch of videos coming out. That's that's what I'm working on a bunch right now. Just I'm focusing mostly, you know, giving all my attention to the BFLs. So that leaves a lot of room to put out a lot better content. So that's the plan. Um, Matt. Well, um, I've got some English choice events. So I'm going to be out at Smith Mountain Lake next weekend for two days or three days, actually, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, pre-fish Friday, fish Saturday, Sunday. They And they do two one-day events, which is pretty neat. Um, so I don't know. I've never seen anybody else do it that way. I think it's cool to give people a shot if you can't make it one day to make the second. And if you fish both, it's kind of nice, too, because you can pre-fish Friday, fish Saturday, see how things go, and you can make adjustments for Sunday, which in the last event I fished ended up getting us a check. Uh, the second day, which is really nice. But after that, I think just some smaller stuff until High Rock, which I'm really looking forward to now that our traveling crew has grown. It's going to be sick. I'm really excited. Shout out, like, Andrew. I'm super, super excited. Shout out to Andrew. Cannot wait. He, he, he's my pick for, uh, for, for the co-angler win on that one. And Phil's my pick for the boater win. <laughs> Mine too. I hope so. That oh, would... we we need a fill to win. And, and awesome. Phil's gonna catch three fish <laughs> on that glide. Phil's gonna catch three and win. Twenty four uh, pounds. The gill glide might play around the brush. Then get don't... then get DQ'd for drinking cores during the tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, why is your life all full of cores lights? <laughs> and his boat is just not <laughs> legal at all. <laughs> yeah, somebody remind me. Clean it out the night before. <laughs> oh, I got you. Oh, let's see. Oh, uh, quick quick Who was I with when I got hit in the eye when I was driving the boat home that night that gave me pink eye? Phil, was I with you? I thought it was Thomas. I, I thought it was me because remember you had that cockroach in your in your foot pedal. Yeah, that no, I feel it like it was. Phil, I think it was you because it was like towards the evening, and oh. Thomas, we fished till like five. four. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah, it was Phil. And I know it was like getting towards low light, and I'm just driving without my sunglasses on, and I'm looking yeah. over the visor or the windshield rather, and got blasted in the eye with a bug or bird shit, and now I have pink eye. So, or I don't know if it's pink eye, but I have an eye infection. My so wear your sunglasses, people, when you're driving. Very dangerous. Get this is why I wear sunglasses touch. at night. It's literally that sensitive. But oh man, he was also trying to do a new brand. Are you chiefing right now? You're like, what? No, dude, it's terrible. <laughs> Look at this eyeball. I, oh, Can you see it? <laughs> oh man. Hey, at least yeah, you don't have to wear nice. Yeah, that's true. I that would. That's way what I would do. Yeah. Wait. We got Greg Plank. What tactics or how do you fish for bass that are cruising around the bed but refuse to eat? I think these were post-spawn fish that would swim eight feet either direction to the bed but would not react. First, Phil, what do you think of this question? Glide bait. Trouble hook. Night <laughs> <laughs> long, baby. <laughs> Glide bait. Uh, Phil did tell me that was his hero. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, there we go. I got these today. Ooh. Bass off. Um, True story. But normally, normally, I use like a mat lure skill. Let me pop out a frame here. That bro. was good. That was really good. Um, let me get to the next question here. Oh, he's doing that. I have one right here. Not a mat lure skill, but a phone. Um, nice, Phil. That ain't gonna work. I was good. That was good, Phil. Um, Why don't you hold the bait up so we could see it? Maybe we could tell. You throw this. It looks like a vicious lure. And it will piss the bass off so bad. They might not eat it, but they will swipe at it. And then you can pitch a jig in. They'll eat that. I but, I dealt with that a bunch at uh, Gaston. I spent the last hour of my tournament trying to catch a cruising three pounder that would stay within sight the entire time. It would not eat a wacky rig, crankbait, swimbait, nothing. And if I caught that fish, I probably would have won. So that was 
Oh man, but those, those those fish are some of the toughest fish to catch, and you yeah. think they'd be easy because you're staring at them and you can see how they react and anything you throw at them, they're they're scared of it. So that is old school though, because I remember in when we were at Kiwi for the national championship, I was doing that. We found a nice better, and I took the treble hooks off my bluegill and I kept throwing it in the bed until it, its personality changed and pissed. It was pissed off, and I switched to a fluke of the same color and I pitched that in there until it ate it. And I've heard guys doing that with mag drafts too. take the treble hook off, um, throw the mag draft in there to piss them off and then go back in there with something else because you never know with a mag draft, they're actually going to get it or not. Um, right. so that's not bad advice at all. This one wasn't even on a bed. I couldn't see the bed. It was just like cruising shallow in like a 10 foot area. I mean, I'm sure there was a bed, but I just couldn't see it. But yeah, and very frustrating. It is very frustrating. Uh, we have Bassin with Big Malone uh any luck towards the buffalo springs area nope no no uh, this is called a burrito gill burrito I'm back he's back burrito guys take burrito gill throw this around beds and fish that are cruising around beds and they will crush it this one actually has bite marks on it from um a bunch of fish that i was i was able to react that's but. that's awesome uh, let's see hp uh we got we got luke oh. wilder uh heard that hp pulls hella hogs and hella <laughs> hella pogs yo best comment i've ever seen in my life that, that's the one shout out to luke wilder that is um hogs and luke, luke's been in the boat with me a few times and he also pulls um hella hogs and hella pogs okay we're gonna save that one for later that's, that's gonna be stuff. that's gonna be good marketing stuff. Uh, let's see. That's the best thing I ever seen. All right, we're going this way. I'm pulling a fill. <laughs> Brandon Salise, will you have the winner on? So I tried. He is 70 years old. Um, he has no Facebook. He has no Gmail. He has no Instagram. I don't know how the hell to get a hold of this guy. He's won Kerr five times in a row, I believe, and the last time was 19 like 99. This guy is old. If you know, uh. Cornell uh, Badra. Please. Oh, dude, I know Cornell. Oh, I've been asking like 50 people and no one knows how to get a hold of this man. Wait, he's the co. You want the co angler? Yeah. No. That's the uh, fishing vids guy. Yeah, YouTube fishing vids is Cornell uh, yeah, Badra. Yeah, yeah, you, should, you should have him on. He's the man. I messaged him. I haven't heard. Yeah, I want Cornell on. Yes. And then Danny Harrell. Okay. He's also won this one like twice, maybe more. Danny Harrell way. won four times. Um, last Don't time was 1999. Him. And then, yeah, and then uh, YouTube Fishing Vids, I just emailed, or emailed, good Lord, it's been long. I, I messaged him on Instagram, so I'm waiting to hear back. Maybe you can, like, pester him a little bit. But, yeah, I want to get him I on, will. too, to talk about it. Uh, I wish him the night before. That's why he won. I gave up all my good luck. Yeah, you know, you're saving it because you're going to win at High Rock. Uh, what, were your top That's three, what were your top three performing baits on Kerr? Did any yes. baits disappoint you because the bite wasn't on? 10 inch glide bait. That was disappointing. Uh, Ned Rick, bait was number one. Spy bait and jerk bait for me. Yeah, mine, mine that surprised me um, was a spook. I started the morning off throwing a spook because I actually looked in my rod locker in the morning and I saw my spook and I pictured Matt's face telling me to throw a spook. And that is the so only reason I pulled it out and I caught two of my three Woo! fish. So shout out, shout out Strunk on that one. How That's often lucky, do you picture dude. his face? More than I like to. Because <laughs> I, I think like, I said like, you should I throw a spook, said, Hunter. You should I throw think a I said spook. something like I want to throw like a popper, and he was like, "Did you get bit on a popper?" And I was like, "No." And he was like, <laughs> That's exactly how that went too. I go, Did and you I was like, get "All right, on a popper, on a I was popper? Like, whatever." Matt. And sure enough, sure enough, Dad, it was best. Yep. <laughs> I don't know how I've ended up with these two children. <laughs> yeah. How did you adopt some? Anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Honestly, you, what you should do is have a vlog, a camping vlog, like, like Scott Martin does like the traveling videos. Yeah. You really, oh, that would be. Matt, Matt and I have had a few moments that probably, you it's... know, they would have made a probably pretty good YouTube video. <laughs> oh, probably. I, yeah. A hundred percent. Phil stumbling into a plan. I don't believe that <laughs> scales and tails podcast. That's my buddy Adrian. Yo, Adrian Dean from Michigan. He's the man. 
we got three more got, questions and we're all caught up. Thank goodness. Oh my goodness. Like, uh, Winbait podcast right now. Check them out. Hail. Yep. I'll link him in the episode description too. We got Matt York. Phil, if I order a bait, how many years <laughs> until I get it? Till you get it from me? <laughs> from me? Shoot. Just <laughs> on USPS, baby. I uh, them out the next day. I have a post office literally right there. That's where he lives. That's right outside. Yeah, literally. There's a post office at the end of my driveway. Uh, Matt, send me, uh, Matt York, send me uh, a way to get a hold of you somehow. Instagram stuff. You just want to bait. That was funny as hell. Uh, you get a comment for that one. Nice. Uh, let's see. I think I got all of them. What top baits? We did that one. We did that one. Let's get Matt's take on this one. I think that's all of the questions, guys. If you have any more questions, guys, you got five seconds. Um, it was. Uh, what tactics or how do you fish for bass that are cruising around the beds, Matt? Didn't we already answer this? Yeah, you did. I don't think Matt did. Oh. I didn't. Yeah, you just said treble hook. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it doesn't count, but it, it works. <laughs> but it does work. <laughs> uh, I think but... when they're cruising like that, honestly, to be completely honest, I don't do a lot of bed fishing. Like I really don't. I trouble um, <laughs> I avoid it at all costs. Like I think it's unless it's a giant, I just can't I'm not good at getting stuck on like fishing for a fish that I can see unless it's on a live scope. I was gonna uh, say <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's different because you don't actually know how big that one is till it's hooked. But I like to I think covering water and like throwing a wacky rig or a shaky head or some finesse bait that you can just kind of blind cast and move you're fishing slow fast i guess is how some people like to say it um i think that is probably my favorite tactic when the fish are shallow and like you just you need to be covering water and they're on beds and like you're probably catching fish that are on beds that you don't know or or roaming like this question was asking but yeah shake head wacky rig um crankbait i guess ace no. if you want a crankbait okay we got two more what questions else? uh last two questions we'll go with this one <laughs> do you have any baits on the website now um, mine. you'll have to go check uh no not right now we're working on a big batch of multiple types of baits gill ts6s ts7s those are the shag lights tech sprouts um seven inch haters and might be a few waking big haters in there as well so like follow me on my socials and subscribe to the email and you'll be able to get notified whenever that's ready to go. They'll be ready to ship the next day. And then Rip and Lip said, wrong answer, Phil. That's Carlton. That's, okay. that's my buddy Carlton. He's from Louisiana. Okay. He's always hating on me. He's, he's my biggest hater. Uh, last Jeff question. Carlton. Last question, guys, uh, and then chat. Uh, we'll, again, last question. We'll try next time for more of this. But um, Otis uh, Symbos, bass are bedding up in my local reservoirs. Any swim bait tips during the spawn? Should I focus on the pre and post spawn bass? Question mark. Phil. Swim bait tips during the spawn. Once again, there's something like this. Big soft fill. It. Pisses him off so bad, it's not even funny. And then you can go in. It, sometimes the glide it works, too. Uh, Gill glide. I got some Gill glides sitting right here, but they're not the ones that I make, so I'm not going to show them. But, Wait, um, do you make that rubber one? No, no. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't make rubber bait, so this isn't competing. <laughs> I'll show this those one. Are, those are glide baits. But... Um, I've actually been meaning to sell those, but um, <laughs> yeah, any sort of gill, soft gill, um, and gill glides work too. Um, if they don't eat it, you can usually like nine times out of ten use it to piss them off bad enough that they'll, you can throw in a jig or run a spinner bait through there or something, and they'll eat it. Um, Good. Bill, is that is that the only time you throw a bluegill, uh, glide bait? 
No, but it is pretty much the only time I throw a soft bait. <laughs> to be completely honest. Love it. I'm looking to change that though. I need to I'm, throw I'm curious on the bluegill glide. What is what is another like condition that you see that working and like being successful? Uh submerged grass from like now all through as long as it's hot when they're eating, you know, when they're eating gills. Um and I'm, you could throw agree with that, yeah. Yeah, throwing it around lay downs. Oh my gosh. There's been a couple times on the river, not on the Shenandoah, but um, on the North River, where they threw or brother rolled in, um, where I threw a gill glide on a lay down, and I literally had like 13 fish come out of the tree and come after it. It was wild. Um, so yeah, throw it around wood, shallow cover, um, gill bed, all that stuff. No, I a hundred percent agree with you. I think bluegill swim baits are something that no one really touches anymore. And I don't know if that's just because like the, the mag draft phenomenon and, and the gizzard shad bite, but bluegill, the bluegill eaters, you know, it's so weird because a bluegill is always the same size. It's about five to six inches, whereas a gizzard shad will get 10 plus inches. Yep. But you, if you are in a bluegill bite, you can have a 10 to 12 pounder that will just choke that five inch bait if they're that dialed into that bluegill deal. Um, but it's very situational. I think Matt Allen really talks about that too, about the problem is, I guess, the, the shape. But then again, you fish gizzard shad glide baits and it's big as hell. So I don't think there would be an issue with that at all. Yeah. So. I mean, people real like shad glide, huge right now and Vic made one of the first really good shag glide um in the paperweight um at the time when he made that it was pretty much just the paperweight and the chad shad um that were the top ones like available there might have been a few others but those were mm -hmm. the very first ones and then COVID hit and then people all of a sudden discovered that in their shad lakes they shag glides and everybody started making shag glides and that exploded overnight and it's the number one bait on the market right now as far as swim baits go but yeah gill baits are definitely underrated right now no good deal good deal guys and then i guess i'm gonna just this is a very uplifting comment and this will this will help uh hunter feel better so we'll we'll, we'll end with this one um Francis says, so glad you got HP on to talk. I got stranded on the James River with my girlfriend, and he passed, passed by fishing. So lucky he was able to take her back to shore for me. <laughs> yep, that happened. <laughs> Wait, you took Justin's girlfriend? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hunter, why didn't you tell us this story, dude? dude I mean, wish you didn't, guy wish you didn't word it like that. Uh oh. <laughs> No, no, I, I, I brought him, his dad, and his girlfriend back to, back to the rail. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he deserves a bait, dude. He deserves a bait. He does. I will, uh, I will get him a bait. Uh, France, uh, yes. yeah, send, send me a way to get in contact with you. I got a bunch of stuff here. I'll send you some stuff. That was freaking awesome. Oh my god. No, no, Thomas, Thomas, you got to make Hunter send him a bait. Hunter, <laughs> Hunter, you, you good for that, bud? Okay. I, I got I got Aiden Francis covered. <laughs> yeah, unlike <laughs> unlike unlike Phil, Hunter's got some baits he can give away. <laughs> yeah, Phil. When... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I hate you guys. Baits <laughs> this year. It's not even we should fun. probably talk about how how much that Hunter and I how much shit Hunter. I gave I Phil all week about giving us baits. <laughs> it was a lot. Well, it there's some other the reasons heart. behind it, but we won't we won't get and into it. We just want more. <laughs> we just want more. <laughs> Especially <laughs> that high quality color. Can't please him. That's not <laughs> like ten. He wants more. Ten? I got none. You took you actually I started with more fish everything baits than I wait, came wait, with. Wait. Because I gave I gave you one. <laughs> Somehow, yeah, it's right here. Yeah, that's mine. <laughs> How I was, 
I was literally bitching all week, like, Phil, I need some more baits. I need some more baits. I need some more baits. You didn't and give, I left with send it one back less. To the- for testing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I had yeah. to give I had to give Phil a bait when we thought he was fishing the tournament too <laughs> of his own bait. <laughs> oh, the white He's one. Like, you mind I if I you? throw that? I'm like, it's yours. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's true. I, I just love that we had to go. I'm so excited for High Rock boys. Oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. I, I feel bad for them, bass at High Rock. It's gonna I'm be a good deal. Is this four boaters here? One, two, I'm three, four, four. Full Keith Poche on that thing. <laughs> I'm jumping. I can't wait. Up. Actually, I guess we should. Okay, we should end with that. What do you think the weights are going to be? I have no clue, but I'm, I'm guessing. Good start. I don't know, 17, 18, somewhere in that range. 18. What was the weights that you sent us earlier? What was that winning weight? Uh, it was 16? 18, 19 pounds. Yeah. <clears throat> That, that that place does. It's going to be a little bit deeper than Kerr. It's going to be better than Kerr, like by yeah. far. The weights are going to be better than Kerr. A lot of docks. Um, the water stationary. Like it's not going to be fluctuating as much. Um, I think I don't know what the bait situation is going to be, but it's going to fish like a North Carolina lake. I think yellow crankbaits docks will be playing. There's going to be a little bit of a ledge bite too. Uh, it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. I think one thing too that I don't know if it gets talked about at Kerr. It was a 14 inch size limit. Like oh. The tournaments that I've fished at Kerr, um, they've either been 12 or North Carolina has a weird little slot where you can have two under 14 and the rest have to be over. So that that definitely, I think, played a part because it was hard to find a 14-inch fish. Because if it was either one of those other other ones, we would have seen probably a, a ton more limits. I know I would have had one. I'm sure Matt would have had one. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that definitely that definitely hurt me. And I, you know, being me, I didn't even know that until they announced it at launch. So that was really cool. And I wonder, like, this is something I'm thinking, too. If you watch, like, Millican and stuff, like, I feel like it's important to weigh your fish in practice to know, like, what the heck you're dealing with. Because some of those some of those fish that we were catching look like coked-out prostitutes, like big heads, and they're just skinny waists. And it's like, okay. <laughs> I mean, they were yeah, rough. Call them yeah, they were rough. And it's like, okay, did we catch 13 pounds? Like, I know we, we, we definitely had 13. I think we had 13, but I think we probably had a little bit more if we waited. The one fish I shook off was probably going to help us a little bit. The one that threw the spy bait was definitely three when he jumped out of the water. And then the one Matt had follow his glide bait, if that connected, that's 14 to 15 probably. But yeah, that was were we around that the was right fish? Fish. That was a rope. Did you try that one on game day? Nope. Didn't end up back there. Ah, terrible. So dummy. I should have. You could lead a horse to water. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the, oh my gosh! All right, so on that bombshell, guys, um, thank you so much for coming on again, guys. Link in the episode description to all their social media handles. Uh, you can follow these guys, uh, Matt. Uh, thank you so much for coming on SB Fishing channels. There, Hunter, your channels. Uh, HB Fishing is linked. Phil, do you have a YouTube channel yet? I do have a YouTube channel. It has no videos. I'm literally like getting cameras this week. <laughs> but Let's I had go. to lock, I had to make sure to lock down the name just in case. What's well, the name? Wait, what is it? What is it? I don't even know. It's like <laughs> <laughs> you have to make sure to lock down the name. You don't even know the name. You're the CEO of the company. How is this working? Like January, okay? <laughs> it's gonna be like Bill Tackle Box LLC. That's yeah. That's what the the name is. You you wanted to be on so, the show and you just hearted my message and it never responded. If you, and hey, <laughs> it was a rough time in life. For Forgot Phil. about that. Hey, I was down bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if you look up Phil's Dagger Box on YouTube, you'll find it. It's there. But um, definitely excited to start making videos. These all three of these guys have inspired me to start doing that and grinding out the content so awesome stuff awesome stuff well guys thanks again for having you on uh let you guys get back to your evenings and we'll see you guys next time uh we are done here bye you're listening to fishing the dmv with your host thomas aaron